To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. So friends, now let us look at the next problem. Mr. X on 1st of July 2015 during the initial offer of some mutual fund invested in 10,000 units having face value of 10 rupees each. On 31st of March 2016, the dividend paid by the mutual fund was 10% and Mr. X found that his annualized yield was 153.33%. Okay. On 31st of December 2017, 20% dividend was given. On 31st of March 2018, Mr. X redeemed all his balance of 11,296.11 units when his annualized yield was 73.52%. What are the NAVs on 31st March 16, 31st March 17, 31st March 18? Okay, so this is a very interesting question. Basically, number of units purchase is given. Okay, then some dividends or whatever are the dividends is given and uh, whether these dividends are paid in cash or reinvested. So, he redeemed all his balance of 11,296. So, basically, the number of units has actually increased. So, it is a dividend reinvestment plan, right? So, the dividend was given and that was reinvested. And Mr. X founded his annualized yield. So, after issuance of dividend and you know whatever is the closing NAV on a specific date, his annualized yield was something, some 153.33. Then subsequently, another 20% dividend was given and finally he redeemed. So, basically, it is some sort of a guess the missing figure kind of a question, right? Some information is given, some information is not given. Let us first plot the information and you know what all is not given let us put some kind of question mark or x or y and you know I think we should have the answer it is actually fairly simple one just you know you need to have some application of mind you should stay calm most importantly actually you know in this kind of problems you should stay calm because there is a very high likelihood that you will make mistakes you know especially when the numbers are close or when, when there are calculations involved which are uh, you know not necessarily straightforward there is a slight chance you may make a mistake so you should be careful of that other than that it is a very very simple problem. So, let us start solving this particular uh, problem. Okay, friends, first let us uh, plot down the numbers, then it makes uh, life easier. And let us also plot down the headings of the column here. We will make a table where we will say units. We need to find out the NAVs, of course. Then we will say dividend. Dividend is percentage and value. For argument's sake, let us put both of them there. Okay. And then what else is there? Then probably you can put uh, NAV. Okay. Or ah, no, they have this other number, right? We have give, been given this data of uh, yield, annualized yield, right? All the data given is annualized, annualized yield percentage. Okay. Let us, you know, have this particular data, and then uh, you know probably we can uh, figure out what the NAV is. That is what is asked in the question. Let's start solving it. Let us first fill up the data. So, on 1st of July 2015, 1st of July 2015, uh, in initial offer, uh, Mr. X invested 10,000 units having face value of 10 each. Okay. So, initial investment date is 1st July 2015, 10,000 units okay, at NAV of 10. Okay. Let us first put this as NAV of 10, 10,000 units. Then dividend paid was on 31st of March 2016. On 6 at 10 percent, right? 10 percent. Okay, so dividend value is your 10,000 units into 10. Okay into 10 percent. This is the dividend value then and after this dividend was done, he found that his annualized yield was 153.33. So, basically the closing NAV at whichever rate you know the dividend was given and reinvested and uh, you know basically at that point of time after completion of all transactions as of that date, the annualized yield. yield for how many months? This is from July 15 to March 16. So, basically it is 9 months. Annualized yield for 9 months is 153.33 percent. Let me add a okay. So, for uh, annualized yield for 9 months is 153.33 right. There is one more 3. 
okay. So, annualized yield for 9 months is 153.33. So, let us compute actually 9 month yield. What is 9 month yield? 9 month yield will be this is for 12 months. After annualizing it, that is, there was a number x, that number of x you divided by 9 and multiplied it by 12 because you wanted it for a full year, you got 153. 0.33 percent. So, if you have to get it for 9, so what is the value of x? You have to actually cross multiply. What will it be? It will be multiplied by 9, divide by 12. So, is equal to 153.33 into 9 divided by 12. You will get 115 percent. Increase in investment value. What is increase in investment value? is so let me put this as uh, increase in investment value is your 10,000 units into 10 into your 115 percent correct. So, it actually you know is a rounded off number. So, we can actually take it 1 lakh 15 thousand we can we will round it off for all our calculation purposes let us take it at 1 lakh 15 thousand only ok increase in investment value is 1 lakh 15 thousand. Out of this increase in investment, how much is attributable to dividend? We are very clearly given, no? Dividend paid is 10 percent, right? So, dividend paid if it is 10 percent on the original value of 10,000 units into 10 rupees is the face value, that is 1 lakh rupees is the initial investment, on that 10 percent dividend is paid less dividend is 10,000 rupees, right? So, balance is attributable to increase in NAV, increase in NAV. So, in fact, I would rather not write it as increase in investment value, I will say as total return, okay. But that is a better way to explain it. So, increase in NAV is this by this, right. So, 105,000. 105,000 is increase in NAV. So, the initial face value was 10 rupees, it has grown 105 percent because it is 1 lakh 5000, right. So, 1 lakh is the initial investment corresponding to the uh, face value of 10. So, the increase of 105,000 basically means increase in NAV of 10 and a half. So, closing NAV will be 10 plus 10 and a half which will be 20 and a half. So, increase in NAV per unit is equal to this by 10,000. So, closing NAV is 10 and a half plus 10 which is the original thing, right. Now, when dividend was given, dividend you they got 10,000. So, when you got 10,000 and the closing NAV is 20 and a half, what are the number of units allotted? So, dividend units allotted is your 10,000 of dividend divided by 20 and a half, basically 487.80 units were allotted, okay. Or dividend units allotted or reinvested, you can call whatever you want to. Right. So, total units as at 31st March 2016 is equal to 487.8 plus your original units 10,000. So, 10,487.8 is the total units and on that day the NAV is 20 and a half, correct. Now, let us go to the next uh, aspect. On 31st March 2017, next dividend. How much? 20 percent, okay. Now, this 20 percent is again on which balance in on this 10487.8 because that is the total number of units held. So, the dividend value is U is 10487 units into 20 percent into 10 rupees face value. So, you got 20,975. These units are also allotted, right. We do not know at what rate they are allotted. We will have to figure that out, okay. NAV on dividend reinvestment date, okay. We do not know, question mark, okay. Let us put that as question mark. We can probably change the title also, units by NAV. NAV on dividend investment rate is question mark. Now, coming to the next one, because based on this is what you compute. 31st March 2018 balance units total units is 11,296.11. So, if 11,296.11 is the closing number of units, 
okay that is the closing number of units how many units would have been allotted in between because this is the only time at which uh, there is a subsequent dividend reinvestment right nothing else was there so if this was the we will also write one more row here nav units reinvested this is the only missing link in between you know first 10487 then you know closing value 11296 so whatever has happened in between is only the units that are reinvested right so it is simply difference of this and this 808 units but the key question is what is the total dividend value divided by the nav after which you got these units why is that required because it is required because they are specifically asking us to actually tell us what is the nav as on so and so date that is asked in the question 31st march 2017 please find out what is the nav that is part of the question see first point what we got is what is 31st march 2016 nav here let us put the date 31st march 2016 so this one we have already found out let me highlight this in color okay this one we have to find out how will we find this out what is the formula for the units reinvested units reinvested is equal to whatever is the total dividend value that is dividend value in terms of face value right why face value because dividend is issued on face value so the number of whatever is the actual inflow in terms of dividend divided by your nav as on that date will give you your number of units what is the information given currently number of units is already given dividend value we know because it is very clearly said as 20 percent of the units held were give, issued as dividend right and we also know that the number of units that is reinvested so we have the dividend value right 20,975 right so we have the numerator we have the you know value on the other side we don't know the denominator just cross multiply you will get the answer so what will be the answer NAV on dividend reinvestment rate date is 20,975 divided by 808.31 which will give you this much 25.95 this reinvestment date is 31 March 2017 okay good now on last day 11296.11 is the total number of units that they have and what is the NAV we don't know again that is question mark now from this how do we arrive at the NAV number here they have given us one key point annualized yield for what period this is from 1st July 2015 till 31st March 2018. So, if you take uh, July 15 to March 16 is 9 months, 16 to 17, 17 to 18, 2 years. So, 2 years is 24 months plus 9 months is 33 months. So, annualized yield for 33 months over a 33 month period, okay, let me put it that way, over a 33 month period is 73.52 percent, okay annualized yield over a 33 month period is 73.52 let me increase the decimal also right so annualized yield over a 33 month period so what is the actual return over the so this is the annualized number so what is the absolute value this is for 12 months over that period if i were to annualize that return i am getting it as 73.52 what is the value for uh, over the entire period absolute value of uh, return over the entire period it basically is into 33 divided by 12 so absolute return over 33 months is equal to into 33 divided by 12 you will get 202.2% so, 202.2 percent is your total overall increase or total overall return. So, absolute and this is percentage by the way, absolute return percentage, absolute return value over 33 months is 202.2 percent into 1 lakh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Why 1 lakh? Because it is the investment. So, you have got 2 lakh 2000 as the return. And 2 lakh 2000 return means absolute return value over 33 months is 2 lakhs 2180. So, closing value of investment is 2 lakh 2180 plus 1 lakh. Okay. 2 lakh 2180 plus 1 lakh makes it 3 lakh 2180. Now, on top of this, we know that closing units is 11296.11. So, what is the NAV? 
So the closing value or closing NAV as on 31st March 2018 is 302.180 divided by 11,296.11, 26.75. So this is the answer for the third period or third part what they have asked. What did we get for 16? We got 20.5 for 16, we got 25.95 for 17 and we got 26.75 for 18. Right? So that concludes this particular problem. Let's move to the next problem. Thank you.